Glad to be back with you. This time I'd like to talk about a uh, dynamics problem. In particular, I want to tell you about how to describe bodies undergoing constant acceleration. Now, I've got two tennis balls here, and uh, if I throw this tennis ball up in the air and it comes back down, it's going slow enough and it's heavy enough, but I don't think the aerodynamic drag makes much difference since the acceleration of gravity is down. This is, we can, under, we can assume this is undergoing constant acceleration, and now both of them are. All right, so that's constant acceleration. Now you may have seen the expressions for constant acceleration before, and what I'm gonna do is, I, right now I wanna show you where those expressions come from. I'm gonna start by writing one of them down and deriving the other ones, and then I'm gonna start from a little more basic approach and derive them all again a different way. So you can see both ways to do this. All right, one of the things you may have seen before is your position as a function of time. X is a function of t is 1 half at squared plus v0 t plus x0. So that's your position as a function of time is equal to 1 half times the acceleration times time squared plus the initial velocity times time plus the initial position. So, if I look at this ping pong ball with relation to the floor, if I throw it up in the air, starting right here, well, that's what, a meter and a half above the ground, I suppose, and so the initial velocity is whatever it is when I let go of it, all right, about a meter or two per second, I suppose, and the acceleration is down minus 9.81, so the initial po uh, position is positive, initial velocity is positive, but the acceleration is negative. Well, that's why it comes back down. And if you're a juggler, and I'm really not, but I can do this, all right? Here, you want to see me juggle three? There. How's that? Close as I get. All right. So, that's the expression for constant, for position due to constant acceleration. Well, velocity as a function of time is the rate of change of acceleration. Well, that's a derivative. Oops, let's try this again. Derivative with respect to time. So the derivative of that, the slope of that, is equal to the velocity. Well, let's see, that's going to be at plus v0. All right, sounds good. That means the velocity at any point in time is the acceleration time, time plus the initial velocity. Well, this ball, I throw it up in the air. The initial velocity is positive, but the acceleration is negative. At the very top of its throw, right there, its velocity was zero and it started to fall downwards again. All right, so that's what that time would be. All right, so last thing is the acceleration. Well, the acceleration is the slope of velocity. It's the way the velocity changes with time. And it's the derivative of that. Well, the derivative of that is just a, so obviously that works. All right, so that's one way to do it. So what I'm doing is it's a derivative and another derivative, and this is just a slope, okay, don't let the word derivative scare you, okay, it's just a slope, all right, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is the exact opposite, rather than finding slopes, we'll find areas. Well, let's do this, let's start with acceleration is dv dt, just like we had before, it's the slope of velocity is acceleration, well, that sure looks like uh, beginnings of a calculus problem. Remember, dv and dt, those are little teeny weeny numbers. We don't necessarily know what they are. They're infinitesimally small, so we don't have, actually have a value for them, but they are numbers. Well, anything that, if you don't know have a, a value for a number, but you need to push it around an equation, you use a variable, right? These act like variables, so I can multiply through by dt if I want to. And I can get a dt equals dv. All right, well, I don't want those in there anymore. I want t's and v's, not dt's, dv's. How do you make a dt and a dv go away? You integrate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a dt plus integral of d, or equals the integral of dv. As long as I do the same thing to both sides of the equation, it's still an equation, all right? Now, I need to have some endpoints for those integrals, all right? Now, I'm going to do something here that might make the mathematicians among you be a little nervous. I'm not strictly following the rules for notation here. Strictly what I should do is I should make a dummy variable there like tau, but I'm just going to use t to try to keep things from getting too confusing. 
Mathematicians, I apologize. All right? So I'm going to go T0 to T and V0 to V. And the reason I'm not making those numbers, I'm leaving those as variables up there, because I don't really necessarily know where I want them to stop. I don't want, I don't want to end at a number. I want to end at some point to be determined later. That's why I leave those variables there. Well, let's see. A, that's going to be T0 minus T. I'm sorry, T minus T0. And that's going to be V minus V0, all right? Because the way I'm going to do this, let me write this out a little more carefully. That's going to be AT evaluated from T to T0 equals V evaluated from V to V0, okay? So I went from there to there to there. Well, let's say that T0 is 0. Okay, well, I'm going to get AT equals V minus V0. And if I want to solve for V0, I get V equals V0 plus AT, just like that, okay? And that's the same as I had, let's see, right there, okay? This and this are the exact same thing, okay? Just, just uh, came about it a slightly different way, right? But we're still talking, we're talking slopes here and we're talking areas there. Well, slopes and areas are the inverse of each other. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus, so this is okay. Let's do one more thing here, and I'm kind of out of, out of board here. Let's, uh, let's put this up there again. Let's just write this back up there real quick. V equals V0 plus AT. Well, what I did before worked pretty well. Let's do that same thing again. DV, or V is just derivative of X with respect to time. It's the derivative of position with respect to the time. It's the way time change, or position changes with time. So that's what that means. All right, and that equals V0 plus AT. Well, let's do that exact same thing again. Let's multiply through by DT. All right, I'll say dx equals v0 plus at dt. That's really sloppy. There you go. How do we make it go away? Same way we did last time. So let's do this. The integral of dx from x0 to x equals the integral from t0 to t v0 plus at dt. Okay? I'm doing the exact same thing I did last time. I, I divide or multiply it through by dx, and I'm integrating over the same uh, integration limits before. I've got to use the same limit integration as this limits this time as I did last time, All right? And that goes to zero again. And what am I going to get? I'm going to get x minus x zero equals v zero t plus one half one half a t squared. So you can see that's almost right. Make sure I stay in frame here. All right. Let me make one change here. Let's push the x0 over to the other side. All right. And I can rewrite this if I like. It's going to look exactly like that. 1 half a t squared. There's that term right there. Plus v0 t. There's that term right there. Plus x0. There it is right there. So these are the expressions right here. that you use for constant acceleration, right? These are really handy, you'll use them a lot. And one thing to remember, the reason I could do this process like this and this process like this, and they were so simple, is that I assumed A was just a number, it's a constant. I assumed A was not a function of time. So that when I integrated, I didn't actually have to integrate A, I just was looking at the T. If acceleration is not constant with time, it's a function of time, you can go through this same process, well this one's a little harder usually, but you can go through this exact same process. You just need to be able to write a as a function of t, continue the derivative of the integral process, whichever you choose. Hope this helps. I'll see you next time.